everybody, welcome back to Live Free and Tool On. Today we're going to be checking out the reciprocating saw, HP, the new one, against the handheld reciprocating saw. This is the more compact version, and this is the more powerful version. And we're actually going to test out both of these, and maybe you can make a decision on which one's right for you. But I think it would be pretty appropriate for us to start outside. I'm actually in the woods, as you can tell, and we're going to be pruning up some branches because I use this for pruning a lot, and I use this for pruning a lot and maybe we'll see which one works better for pruning. Then we're gonna step inside and we're gonna do some speed and power test on wood with cross cuts. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the specifications of the tools. The compact is 3,000 strokes per minute. It is lightweight, it is a compact design. It is meant to be used with one hand, but you can use it with two hands. The stroke length, that means how far it can actually travel is 5 eighths of an inch. It does have a light right here and that's so you can see better what you're doing. It does have an adjustable face on it. So this can uh, go around, it can contour to whatever you're cutting. Um, the model number for this is PSBRS01. Uh, you can get this at the Home Depot for regular price of $99. This reciprocating saw is their best reciprocating saw. The model number for this is PBLRS01. Uh, this can do 3,200 strokes per minute. And the stroke length for this, which is the uh, pat, the most it can travel back and forth, is one inch and one quarter. So, inch and a quarter. This also does have an onboard light, and this also does have an adjustable face on it to contour around whatever you're trying to saw. Uh, you can get this for $129 regular price at the Home Depot. Oh, one other thing, I forgot to say that we are using the Diablo pruning blades. These are fantastic. They have been well used, but they're still very sharp. And I'll be using them with both the saws, so it's not like one saw has an advantage over another saw. You're just seeing what I'm using here. So you can see this cut really well. Uh, it was super stable in my hand, had no issues. I did it with one hand with no problem. So it wasn't hard to use that one either. Um, when I did extend my arm, I felt like this, the weight of the actual saw itself did most of the cutting. Um, it has higher RPMs and it did better uh, on the cutting portion. Okay, so let's step it up. We're gonna cut some bigger branches here. Uh, so we'll start on We'll start on this side first and then we'll come around here. So we'll do the uh, bigger saw here. Then we'll move over to this one. Let me get this little branch out of the way. Okay, so that actually cut pretty good. And this is about a three inch in diameter uh, limb. I think at this point, anything bigger, you should really go to a chainsaw, but let's go ahead and get the other one set up and chop through. So again, the same diameter. I will say this, um, I, I just put a ton of pressure on this in order to cut through there. Um, it didn't feel as powerful, so I did have to put a lot of pressure in order to get that through, but the motor didn't die. It, uh, it didn't bog down, so it was doing its job. It kept up and it got the job done. So let's move on to the next. Okay, so for this test, we're going to be doing a lot of pruning. So this is where you would be sticking in and you would be cutting kind of at arm's length and you would be cutting multiple limbs at one time. So you'd be doing this, you know, cutting around. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna simulate whenever you prune everything for, you know, preparation time for the spring or, you know, or even the fall. Um, so we're just gonna cut a bunch, so let's get into it.
So I just cut 11 branches with this. It felt like nothing. It was super easy. This was super light. Uh, that worked out great. Let's go ahead and get the large reciprocating saw in and then we'll do the same thing. Okay, so this one did a great job. The power is there. I had no issues cutting, but I did find myself as I was cutting, it would drop and I would just wanted to put my hand underneath it. So I wanted to use two hands uh, on this at all times, not just because the weight, because it's not that heavy. I mean, I could hold it for a long time, but it does get fatiguing. Um, and then um, it just naturally with the stability of it and over time it would get heavy. Um, you just want to use two hands, which when you're reaching in and you're just pruning a lot, I could see that maybe not being as comfortable or as effective. So as a rule, I try not to cut anything over three inches with a regular reciprocating saw or the small reciprocating compact saw. But in this case, we have an opportunity that we can cut some bigger branches. That is roughly the top one around four, four and a half inches in diameter. So we're gonna cut that one. We're gonna to try to cut it with this. Then the bottom ones, that's a three inch, and these are two inches. And we're just gonna start at the top. We're gonna to use the uh, compact reciprocating saw, and we're gonna see if we can't cut that one, see how much input it takes uh, in order to get it up there. Now, to So I knew it was ridiculous. I knew it was impractical, but I just wasn't cutting that big one uh, far enough. This just not getting the work done. Okay, so that took a little bit of time, but it got the job done. So this is uh, roughly across in diameter around four inches. This is a pretty strong pine tree um, and it is fresh right here. Um, it did start to die on the end, but it is still fresh because this is a recently broken limb. Um, but I can say that this is a chainsaw worthy. Uh, <laughs> by no means would I be using a reciprocating saw on this typically this is chainsaw worthy, but it does give a demonstration that with the right blade, it can get the job done. I do wanna do one more test with these, and I'm gonna take a pressure treated two by four. We're also gonna take a 10 pound weight. We're gonna put the weight on both of the tools and we're gonna see how fast we can get through this pressure treated two by four. At least at that point, you, you know that it's gonna be a lot of pressure pulling down 
on the blade itself uh, and on the tool, we got to make sure that it, the motor is going to overcome that friction on both of these. And then we'll see what the real difference is when it comes to this wood. Now, the reason why I'm doing a 2x4 is because a tree is a lot harder to cut than regular 2x4. Now, this has lost most of its moisture in the process. That's why I'm using a pressure tree to because it's a little bit tougher than typical um, just because it has a, a, a larger moisture content inside of it. Um, and we're going to see how it cuts through here. We're also going to be using two new blades in order to do this. These are the blades it actually came with. They are identical. So I don't see there being any issues there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and clamp this up and give it a shot. One thing I am going to mention, uh, this is an HP tool. So I'm using the HP batteries. Both of these are a fully charged 3 amp hour HP battery. Um, now the HP batteries have two extra ports in the back and that is to allow for a little bit more controllability and a little bit more power from these tools. Unfortunately, this is an HP tool, but it does not have the extra contacts, which would be located right here. Um, so the technology has to be uh, considered to be in the uh, motor itself. At least that's what we're going to choose to believe right now because that's what we're being told. Okay, so we're using another fully charged battery. This is another 3 amp hour fully charged battery here. Now, one thing I do want to note about this tool you can see right here, it does have the extra two. Now this is an HP tool as well, so I'm not sure if that's gonna make a difference. I will assume it makes a difference, um, but this is also a bigger tool. So let's not kid ourselves, this is more powerful, but let's just see what the difference is. Okay, three, three two, two, one. one. Okay, so they both perform pretty well. Let's not kid ourselves. We knew that this big reciprocating saw was going to win for the pure power that it has and for the speed it has. I am surprised about this little guy because so much weight and the friction that that's going to cause by this 10 pound weight being, uh, you know, pulled on this, I thought it was going to bog it a little bit, but no, it soldiered right through. It did what it needed to do and it cut the wood pretty well, albeit not as fast, but it got the job done. That's not saying that this can do everything that this can. That just means it put it through a fairly harder test, even though it was only two by four, and it succeeded well with the 10 pound weight. So um, if you're choosing which one to buy, you have to look at your circumstance. What are you going to be using this for? Construction um, or homeowners just around the house stuff? And I think that's going to help you guide your decision a little bit. If you can get them both, I would say go ahead and get them both. If you can, watch out for the sales um, and, and make sure that you get that. Uh, one other thing is that we know that this does have the extra HP terminals, which means I think it has higher performance and it pulls uh, pushes the batteries a little bit more here. Uh, so let's say your battery life is not as good on this big one. Uh, this one doesn't have the extra terminals, but it doesn't have a bigger motor either. So I think batteries are going to last longer in this one because you're not doing as much work. So everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.